Hello everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com here. Now this video is all about the sum of normals gives us a normal. So I should have that in flashing lights. If we have a set of variables that are normally distributed and we add them up, we create a new variable that is also normal. In short, sum of normals is normal. And we're going to use that this result to do this exercise. So let's consider independent ran standard normal variables. Standard normal variables, standard means one, the normal with a mean of zero and a variance of one. Okay, we have to state the distribution of the following. Okay, so let's do them each in turn. Now, zi is normally distributed 0, 1, where i goes from 0 to n. All this means is that I have n observations, z1, z2, z3, so on till I get Zn of them, right? And each of these is Zs, Zs, if you're in the States, or each of these Zs follows a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of one. So A, what is the distribution of Z1? Well, there's no working whatsoever because Z1 is where I is equal to one, is going to be normal with mean of 0 and variance 1. Hence the answer to A is we simply write down Z1, nothing to show here, is here. Standard normal from the information given. B, we create a new random variable. Let's call it Y, which is 1 over N, and we sum over the zi's. Now if we put that, we can look at this here and we can recognize this as something more familiar. It's just the average, isn't it? So what happens, so y then is the, is an average of the z's. Now because it's a sum of zi's which are normal, we've known that sum of normals is normal. So y will be normal. In other words, we know that y is going to be normal with some kind of mean and some kind of variance, which is what we need to find. Okay. Well, the mean. Well, recall that what goes in here is the expected value of the variable and what goes in here is the variance of the random variable. Now, to do the expected value of y, take the expected value of this. So we take the expected value of this right-hand side. And then we apply the rules of the expectation operator which hopefully you are all familiar with. So the constant and what are the random variables? The n is a constant, so 1 over n is a constant. Zi's is normally distributed. It must mean that it's a random variable. So we know the rule is that the constant times a random variable, the constant comes out, so it's 1 over n times expected value of that sum. If I miss a skip a skip step, let's take the expected value through the brackets, I am just going to get this. Plus dot 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 dot. Okay, where for short I've not bothered putting brackets around these expected these here around the expected values because it's quite obvious what it means here. Now, what is the expected value of Z1? 
zero. Why? Because we already said expected value of z1 is zero. Expected value of z2 is zero. Why? Because we're told that each zi is normal with mean zero and a variance of one. So all these means, all these expected values are zero. Hence the answer is zero. So we've got one part of the answer here, it's zero. Next we want to find the variance of y. Okay, take the expected value of the left hand side, that take the expected value of the right hand side. I think ahead here, what's going to happen? We're going to apply the rules of the variance operator. Now, we already know that 1 over n is a constant, so do we write this? Is this okay? Right, I guess 25% of you are saying yes. Maybe 30% of you are saying don't know, just wait for the answer, see what he says. And the others of you are saying no, it's wrong, because when you have a constant, you take it out, you square the constant. Like so. Next, we've got to look at this thing. Now, I've just done a video just today. Variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus variance of y plus 2 times the covariance of x and y. But if x and y are uncorrelated, the covariance is 0. So can we say, do we have any covariances in this expression? And is no. Why? Because, this is why it's important to read the question, we're told these variables are independent. Okay. If they're not independent, you'd end up with a great mess because you have so many covariances to deal with. Then this method of proof would not be would not be easy at all. Um, so we have, because of independence, the variance of a sum is a sum of the individual variances of each variable, like so. And if I'm to explain what I'm doing properly, I, I should say on this line or somewhere around it, because the z's are independent. Okay. But what is the variance of Z1? It's 1. What is the variance of Z2? It's 1. How do I know that? Because in the question we're told that the variance of the Zi's is here, isn't it? Which is 1. So the whole lot comes to 1. Well, add up all these 1's. How many 1's do I have? Well, it's how many Z terms do I have? That's n of them. So, oh look, I did a little typo here. Right, so we have n of them. So it's going to be n. And that n cancels with that n. gives us the answer of 1 over n. Therefore, I have shown 1 over n that the, when you look at an average way the, of the random variables that are normally distributed, the new distribution of the new variables is also normal with the mean of 0 and the variance of 1 over n. Think about, so that's the proof. But when I think about what the result means, it means, let's look at normal distribution, Say so this is the distribution of any zi, we know it's focused around zero, don't we? Okay, any zi. If we superimpose the distribution of y on top of this, what's it going to look like? As n gets bigger, well, how? Yeah, what's it going to look like? It's going to be normal, so it's a bell shaped curve. Where is it centered? It's a centered around a zero. So the hump, tip of the hump, is going to be 
around 0 here. But what about the variance? Well, can you see that as n gets bigger, that variance get closer and closer to 0? It must mean that it gets more and more concentrated around 0, the observation. So in other words, my y starts looking more like this for a given number, bit depending on the value of the n there. So let's put n beside it. And as n gets bigger and bigger, you can see it's going to get more and more concentrated around 0. So what the heck does that mean anyway? Well, it means that if I want to kind of get a guess of what value, the mean value of z is, I'm better off doing it with y rather than just pulling out um, a number from a normal distribution of mean 0 and a variance of 1. Anyway, that's beside the point. That was just something extra. Okay, so that's 2. And that leaves us with C. Now C is pretty easy because C is basically easier version of B, isn't it? So you go away and do the C. I think you could find that the distribution of this new variable C is going to be normal with variance of mean of 0 and the variance of n. So go and do that, show that using a similar method as I've done to B. And then give yourself a pat on the back. Fantastic.